Hey folks, it's Pat here. Got a chapter 12 question that I want to cover here in a little bit more detail, and that's ANOVA hypothesis test in the ANOVA table. Um, stay away from this one if you haven't done some of the previous um, chapter 12 questions and or problem sets, including um, F distribution, make sure you do the degrees of freedom one, and then um, the one where you calculate mean square treatments and mean square error. Um, because if you do those, um, you, you, you're going to get this one right more often. Now, it's it's rare for someone to just plow through these, all right, um, without making some mistakes. And since these questions here with the ANOVA table will ask you a bunch of different types of questions, if you get one wrong, you need to be able to kind of diagnose what you did wrong. And so if you do those other three questions, um, those other three topics before you get to this one, it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, otherwise, this one, I, I see a lot of people quit out on this problem, okay? So let's walk you through it, all right? So um, when you do an ANOVA, you're going to construct an ANOVA table using all the elements that we've done in the past, okay? And, you know, in future classes, Microsoft Excel will do this for you. But here in Alex, we have to do it by hand, all right? Um, you can read the problem, but don't worry about it too much because you just have to answer the, um, the questions that it's asking you, okay? And so it gives us the ANOVA table here. Here's your degrees of freedom for each one. Here's our mean square. Um, this, of course, is MST, mean square treatments. And this is mean square error, so mean square error, all right, which we calculated in a previous problem. And so this one, it's asking you to calculate the F statistic. And this is the first time where you have to do this. Okay, now you might have noticed in some of the previous problems where it gives you the formula to do this, but the formula is really easy. It's just MST divided by MSE, all right? So, and that's going to be um, 4, 8... 4826 divided by or 0.35 divided by uh, 2211.88 okay so just this divided by this gets us an F statistic if this S statistic is like 17 or something like that you did it wrong <laughs> I tried again <laughs> all right so it shouldn't be that far off okay so anyway um, so there's our F statistic. Now it's going to ask us to make a number of conclusions or look up things on the uh, on the ANOVA table here. So this one, for example, how many total days, the sum of all days from modes of advertisement were sampled in the study? Okay, and so that's asking us right there for numerator deno or denominator degrees of freedom. All right, uh, we're going to have to look at that, but we can't just you know, take this and, and put it right in there because what it's really asking us for is the n, the sample size total altogether. Now we know that in order to calculate based upon a previous problem, denominator degrees of freedom, we add up everything in the sample and then we subtract k. All right, well, k is the number of different groups, okay? And so you actually have to do two steps to figure this one out because you have to think about this a little bit. So if k, if numerator degrees of freedom is k minus 1, and that's 5, we know that it was actually 6, all right? So there's six different categories here, all right? Because in order to get this number, it'd be k, category 6, minus 1 would be 5. And so and we know that the denominator degrees of freedom is n minus k. And so if this one is asking us for n here, the number in the sample, all right, we have to take this, 234, and then add in the number of categories right there, which was 6. So this is going to be 240. And so if you hadn't done that problem on degrees of freedom, you'd be looking at this one and getting it wrong and looking at the, you know, the description and being like, oh, my God, what's N's and K's and stuff? All right, so again, make sure that you do those before you do these because sometimes it asks you really jacked up questions like this. All right, so next one. For the ANOVA test, it's assumed that the population variance of daily sales are equal to each mode of advertisement studied. Uh, what is the unbiased estimate of the common population variance based upon sample variance? Well, we know that common population variance based upon sample variance is calculated as mean square error. And so that's going to be this guy right here. And if you did that problem where you had to calculate these, that should be pretty apparent because you're actually using sample variance. Remember where we pooled it and then found the mean of that? That's probably what that is right there. That is what that is right there, okay? And then so next one, using the .01 level of significance, what's the crit value for the F statistic, okay? So you have to go all the way back to that F distribution problem to figure this guy out. Remember, to find a critical value, we're going to use this guy right here. All right, the table lookup for an F value. All right, so in the F value, to find a cutoff value, 0.01 is going to be our critical value here. 
but we'd have to punch in both our numerator and our denominator degrees of freedom, which gives us in the table, so 5 and 234, okay? Gives us a crit value of 3.09, or 3.0, how many does it want me to round this to? Uh, dang it, I have to go read the problem. Round to two decimal places. So that'd be 3.10. There we go. Ugh, yuck. Hate it when you have to round these like that. So, but anyway, so that gives me my crit value right there. Sometimes it'll ask you for a p value. All right, so in which case you use this guy, but now it's asking for a crit value, which means we have to compare our f statistic to our crit value. Because using the 0.01 level of significance, same crit value as here, can the marketing managers conclude that the mean daily sales arising for at least one of modes differs from the other? All right, so we have to take a look at our F statistic here. All right, if our F statistic is greater than this, then the answer to that question is yes. If it's less than, then no. And so our F statistic is significantly less than that. So no, we can't make that determination. Um, that one doesn't come up too often, but I'm glad it did here because remember back from Z and T where you calculate the crit value and then you take a look at the curve. Is it on the outside of the curve? Well, if the F statistic, remember it goes like this, the F distribution goes up and down like this. And so we're looking for things way out in the tippy tail. All right. And since our F statistic is lower than our crit value, so our crit value would be here. Our F statistic would be here. We'd be interested if it's over there. No, we cannot make a conclusion on that basis. All right, so let's go ahead and check that and see if I got it even wrong. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I jack these up sometimes, so you got to be really careful. All right, let's just uh, let's try one more here real quick. Let's see if we get one where it wants us to fill in the table. Yep, sure does. So this one wants us to fill in the table. All right, and so if you haven't done those previous problems, this one's really difficult. All right, so first thing it's looking for is degrees of freedom directly from that other problem. So remember, numerator degrees of freedom up here is the number of categories minus one. So K minus one, so we have five categories minus one gives us four. Numerate or denominated degrees of freedom, remember we have to add all these up. So we got 28, uh, five of them. Okay, and then subtract out the number of categories. We got five categories, okay? So if you hadn't done that previous problem, this one would be really intimidating, okay? Then, of course, we get an easy one here, which is where we just add these two together. <laughs> All right. So, but again, numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. If you didn't know those, that's really difficult. Mean square error on this one. So two different ways you can calculate this one. Let's do it the easy way. All right. The easy way to do this is to take sum of squares. All right. And divide it by whatever the degrees of freedom within the treatments is and do the same thing for the error. So this one, 1206.46 divided by 4. Because it's just taking this, divide it by that. That gives us our mean square error, 301.615. Okay, same thing with over here, 144.80.1. Oh, oops. Don't jack it up, man. Sometimes I use the mouse and sometimes I use the 10 key. It just depends on whether or not I'm too lazy to move my arm. <laughs> so take that and divide it by degrees of freedom, 135. There we go. 107.26 and so that gives us our estimates for each one of those all right now to get the s statistic just like before we take these this divided by that 301.615 divided by 107.26 and there we go it is 2.811 uh, or 12 okay next thing what's the p-value so going back to the f distribution um, problem um, if you leave this guy in here, all you have to do is punch this and then put in your uh, degrees of freedom and, of course, your degrees of freedom for the denominator on there. Okay, so just using this button right here, and that gives us our p-value, 0 0.028. Okay, and then so um, we don't have to use the crit value here. We can just use the p-value. Remember, if our p-value is lower than a level of significance, yes, we can reject the null. So based on a nota, can we can declare that there are differences? So among the differences method collection, use the 0.05. So .028 is less than .05. So yes, we can conclude that. And let's give it a check here, see if we got them all right. 
Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> okay, get a little lucky on this one. Um, don't feel bad if you get one or two of them wrong, all right? So since there's a lot of things that we had to fill in here, if you've done the other problems before, you can still salvage your bar up here by diagnosing what it is that you did wrong. Sometimes maybe you got these flipped. Sometimes maybe um, you just got one of the degrees of freedom wrong. And of course, if you get that wrong, you're going to get this wrong, okay? And so if you've done those previous problems, you can salvage your way through a couple mistakes here without completely frustrating yourself. If you haven't done those problems before, this one's a pain because there are a lot of different ways they can ask you these questions, all right? So I encourage you, definitely go do the other problems first, but work your way through these. Ask questions if you have them, and good luck because this one is probably, it's not the hardest one on Chapter 12, but it's its the one that definitely I think more people give up on. So um, good luck at it, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.